back. How are y'all doing? Hello. Good. Hello, everybody. Good, everybody. Yeah, hey, boys and girls. A- Happy New Year. Hope it's been a good 2023. Yeah. We are back with our stories. And we have an Old Testament story and a New Testament story today. That's our first story of 2023. Oh, our, first, our first one is King David. Ooh. And it's Ooh. not just one story. So I'm not sure how we're going to talk about this. I think we just are going to talk about King David because there's a lot of stories about David. Is this the same David as David and Goliath? It is that same David. Yeah. And he's also a king and later. And he also um, was a psalmist, meaning singer wrote, songwriter. Yeah, singer songwriter. I mean, he was a he was just like the great, biblical Taylor Swift. He was, he was, he was, he was. I haven't heard it put that way, but I like that one. Biblical mm. Taylor Swift. Mm. Um, so King, he was also a shepherd. Uh, yes. He yep. had some humble beginnings. So yep. since we, since made we just some big finished, mistakes. Yeah. Since we just yep. finished Christmas and in the Advent season, is this the same David that Jesus is descended from? That's exactly yeah. right. Oh, uh, it comes full circle. It is. It is. David is sort of a goat. He's, I mean, he's very important here. He is a big with, deal. Uh, he is a big deal because he also is both an Old Testament and New Testament guy and just really pretty important. So he had to be on the run a little bit too. Like Saul wasn't too crazy about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway. He was strong, but flawed. He's very human. Mm-hmm. And he was pretty well loved too. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I think maybe that's the way the boys and girls, we start, we, we, we talk about just as we did there, we talked about kind of who this uh, important person is in our stories because there aren't there isn't just one story we, I think we can point to. However, there is a key verse here. Okay. And the key verse is in the in First Samuel chapter mm-hmm. eight, verse six. And let me read that. This is the kind of our key takeaway for uh, for David. And this is about King David. This isn't little boy David or Shepherd David. This is this is this is I think this is what um, one of the important takeaways for David. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people and all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Mm. So give us a king to govern us. That's probably the the, the takeaway. Give yeah. us a king to govern us. Yeah. A leader to to uh give them support and um good guidance good leadership i think one of the things about kind of tying into that um is that david ended up carrying out some unexpected callings in his life um i don't think he planned on and i don't think his family planned on him going from a shepherd boy to being king of all the people but he answered a pretty unexpected calling in his life. Um, a lot of the things he did were unexpected. Um, he was called on to fight this giant Philistine, Goliath, who was feared by a lot of people. And he was just a boy, um, but he did it. And so I think that's another theme in David's life is that he answered a lot of unexpected callings from God. And that could be something a takeaway for our boys and girls is that they may be called on to answer some unexpected callings in their lives, just like King David did. And they do so with the spirit of courage, even if they're terrified. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, that's a good start for David. There's a lot more to say about David, but I think that's a good point. Our New Testament story is also... It's a parable, but it's it's actually multiple parables. But we're just going to talk about two of them today. It's about parables of lost and found. What's a parable? A parable. Oh, that's a good question, Jared. So we talked about parables last year, but I bet they forgot about it. A parable is what? It's a story with a teaching lesson. Mm-hmm. And Jesus loved to tell parables. And parables often parables often make us rethink things we think we know mm-hmm. they turn the upside down what we think we know mm-hmm. jesus was great at teaching parables and you know what he preached them two thousand years ago and they still mean something to us today 
I think that's pretty important too. Yeah. Uh, Often they were like object lessons. Like they mm -hmm. took something that could be really hard to wrap your head around, like the kingdom of God or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, or the end of time. Uh, it would take some of those. Or things. injustice. <laughs> yeah. It would take some of those things that are hard to wrap your head around. And Jesus had a way of tying it to an object to make it easier to understand so he took some big hard heavy concepts and really broke it down for the people through these stories these parables so he, he did a lot to help people figure things out and those objects pr that you mentioned are things that everybody knows about they knew about yeah. then and they know about now like yeah. coin and the changing of seasons yeah and um seeds mm -hmm. and trees mm -hmm. and grapes mm -hmm. and vineyards <laughs> so um today we have two the lost sheep and lost coin us and then the other one well we'll read that first and we'll do that. i'm gonna read this this is from our spark bible in case our boys and girls want to read it <clears throat> telling stories was jesus's favorite way to teach about god once there was a shepherd who had a hundred sheep jesus said he loved them all, the big ones and the little ones and the good ones and the naughty ones. They were his sheep and he loved them. Every day, his shepherd counted his sheep to make sure they were all safe. One day, he counted only 99 sheep. Oh, no, one was missing. Right away, the shepherd left the 99 sheep together and went to look for the one that was lost. The shepherd listened for the lost sheep to, bah! he looked in all the places that sheep might get stuck or in trouble. It took a while. But the shepherd kept looking until he found the missing one. Then he called to all of his friends and neighbors. Come on over, he cried. I found my sheep. Let's have a party. Jesus loved telling stories about this because about something being lost and found. I have another story, Jesus said. Once there was a woman who had saved up 10 little silver coins. One day when she was counting them, she discovered that she had lost one. What do you think she did? Did she think to herself, oh, well, I've still got nine, so who cares if one is lost? No, she did not. She lit her lamp and swept the house from top to bottom. She looked under under and over and around everything in the house until she found that lost coin. Oh, she was so happy. She had a party to celebrate. God is like this shepherd and this woman. You know, she just said, God would never stop looking for someone who was lost. Mm. That's a good example of a parable. Two parables. Those are two parables yeah. for the price of one. We know uh, we know what coins are. Mm -hmm. We know about sheep. Mm -hmm. and, um, God never stops mm -hmm. looking for us when we're lost. And we know how scare how scary, angry, frustrating it can be when you lose something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you want yeah. to find it again. <laughs> There's another story about lost and found. And it's it's not about objects, it's about people. And I'm going to Instead of reading this one, let's just talk about this. And this is the prodigal son. Yeah. What is this story about? Well, let's see. Uh, father has two sons, younger and older. Mm -hmm. The older son stays and continues to work. Then the younger son says, you know what? I just, Dad, give me everything I'm owed, and I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And then he falls into there's a what isn't it like a famine or uh, well yeah he, he goes off and parties and then blows all the money and then there's a famine and he has nothing to get through that famine yeah. and says so he's eating at like a pig trough he says you know what the the workers for my father eat better than this so I'm gonna go home and then he goes home and the father greets him and they slaughter the fattened calf because you know the son's back and the older brother gets wind and is, you know, pretty upset uh, and hurt by it because he doesn't have the same. And he thinks is, you know, confronts his father who says, at the end of the day, everything I have is yours, but your your brother who was dead is back, who was lost is found. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So we celebrate. Absolutely. So who was lost in the story? The younger son was very lost. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, who else is lost? I think you're right, PR. Who else is lost? I think I think there could be more than one person lost. I think the older brother was lost in some ways. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, yeah. and the fact that, you know, um, I think what what's remarkable is, I mean, we obviously see that um, the father gave the younger son a welcome back that he didn't deserve um, and showed him grace there and, and when he came back. But when the um, older son gets upset with his father, the father doesn't get upset back at him. He shows him some grace and compassion. He shows him some care as well and, and takes the time to show love and explain to him what happened. He, um, he doesn't just dismiss the brother out of hand. So the older brother got some grace there. Um, and, and the dad got both his sons back. Yeah, lost and found. I think for me, the most important part of this story is the word prodigal. What does prodigal mean? Wild or recklessly extravagant. Exactly. Ex recklessly, wildly, abundantly extravagant. Who, in what ways did that play out? Well, the son, the partying son, he blew for a lot of money. He was, he was a, he was abundant with his spending habits and his partying, etc. Why isn't this called the prodigal father, though? Well, the prodigal father also gave lots of um, grace. Mm -hmm. And who else did? God the Father. We talk about God being one who is always abundantly and extravagantly giving grace and um, love and forgiveness and second chances and hundred chances, etc. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good story. Good story. Good. good all three good stories. Lost and found. Oh yeah. All, all right. Next week we are going to talk about the rich man and Lazarus. That's our New Testament story. And our old testament story is David, Nathan, and what is a prophet. I think we're gonna probably focus on what is a prophet. I think that's probably gonna be the most important thing for us to talk about. You all have a great week and um, we'll see you soon. All right. Good, be well, everybody. Take care. Bye.